What's good? What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of What Now? I am excited today. I have good energy today. It is Monday. We're going to set the tone for the week with another motivational uh, conversation. And uh, hopefully everybody is doing well and uh, feeling inspired as well. Uh, I hope also that these series that I've been doing for over a year now um, are actually inspiring people to pay it forward or to inspire other people. Uh, whatever the case may be, if you have good energy today, spread it along. If you don't, feel free to catch it from this live or from me or from other people that you get positive energy from. That is actually the message that I have for everybody today. Um, I see that Instagram is uh, having a hard time telling people that I'm live. So hopefully people are actually tuning in. It's always like, you know, a touch and go with Instagram. You don't know if they're going to like do what they need to do and, you know, service me in my platform. Uh, I mean, I use them. So, you know, I just going to have to put up with uh, whatever they're doing. But hopefully I, I see people coming in. Thank you so much for tuning in already. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to go. I have a wonderful guest today, and I know that my guest today is definitely going to be inspirational with his story and, and you know, just his journey and his experiences. So hopefully uh, he'll be here soon. Um, I'm head. Oh, I just got a message from him. He's just getting in. He'll be on here. Hi, Stace. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I was just telling everybody, well, everybody missed it because there were no people tuned in yet. But yeah, if you have positive energy, if you have good energy today, spread it. I hope I can spread it through this um, uh, <laughs> through this live. What are you saying? Um, Tell me about ours. All right, cool. Cool. Definitely looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Um, also, if you don't have energy, if you're low on energy because of the world or whatever's happening in your life, just know that I hope to give it out here today. Feel free to take it. It is free. I'm giving my positive energy to everybody who needs it. That's what this hour is for. It's two hours a week that I'm doing, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Um, uh, uh, Pacific and 9 p.m. over here Central European time. What's up, Chris? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody. I see you, Mike. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wait until this guest is here, so I'm gonna do my little monologue again. But again, at this point, I feel good. It's a good Monday. I started off hitting the ground running, so hopefully, I can transfer this energy to everybody who needs it and everybody who needs a little motivation and a little pick me up. Because that's what this whole series is about, really. We're more than a year further in this pandemic. We are still in lockdown. They're supposed to um, loosen up the restrictions on Wednesday. Tomorrow is one of our biggest holidays over here called King's Day. The, normally, you can compare it to like Mardi Gras. Everybody's like partying in the street. There's drinking everywhere. There's partying everywhere. There's music everywhere. But this is the second year in my lifetime that there's nothing because of the pandemic. And it's really weird because normally it starts the night before. So it would start right now. It's 9 p.m. People be out there partying, going through the entire night, going into tomorrow, partying, drinking, drunk, just festivities everywhere. It's crazy. You can't walk the streets. But this is the second year that there's nothing going on in these streets, which is really weird. But it is what it is. So we're just going to have to party over here. Um, that is actually tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, they're supposed to loosen up the restrictions. We're going to get rid of our curfew because, yes, we are under a curfew over here still, um, which is horrible. But, um, I mean, there's nothing, nowhere to go. So, it's you know, honestly, it doesn't really do anything. It's just the fact that you can't be outside after a certain time. Um, I hope everybody is doing good and better than where I am at. I'm not even sure about the numbers over here. It's just this crazy government. But I stay inspired and even these talks, when I'm too tired to do these talks, I get inspired by my guests. So um, hopefully everybody else does too. Um, if you need to pick me up, just tune in. You can you can scroll to, through my IGTV and there's like almost a hundred talks that I've done. I'm sure that um, there's one person in there that you find interesting that can um, help you get motivated or whatever. There's, there's, there's visual artists, there's actors, there's filmmakers. There's uh, musicians, there's producers, DJs, there's pretty much a little bit create, creative people for everybody. 
Uh, Stacy, yes, that is daylight. I can't believe you're just now seeing this because this thing has been popping since number one I did on this platform. And I also have interviewed that artist because people were asking me about it. And every talk, there's somebody that sees that painting. So go check it out. Mike Thompson, it's Mike T Artworks on uh, IG. He's also in the IGTV list that I have with all the talks. Uh, very um, great visual artist, illustrator. He's worked with Marvel, he's worked with Coca-Cola, he's worked with Def Jam. So yeah, check it out. I can't believe you're just now seeing that stays, but I'm sure you always look at me or the guest or whatever. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. It's been there, It's this is situated in this situation where people can see it. I really need Tehran to, to get in here. My guest is a great comedian. He's inspiring, he does radio, he does uh, stand up, he does everything. So yeah, I definitely am very excited to have him on. It's always a little bit, uh, you know, waiting if Instagram is is cooperating for my lives. Also waiting if the guest is going to show up, if they're not, you know, hindered or something. But I'm sure that uh, that he'll show up any minute since he was just getting in. So for now, I'm just going to have to. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to have to do the monologue. He's on tear on time. Yep, making some tea. It's going to be a while. Well, he got an hour. It's going to cut into his talking time, but it's whatever. If you have questions, um, you can put it in the question box for him. Oh, there's a question for me. Uh, Shade Hour. Question for Lola. How did you find out about him? I actually found out about him through our great new medium clubhouse. Uh, me and him were in a room together uh I don't know which room it was, probably Justin's room, but yeah, he was cool. We got to talking. He was amazing. So I'm like, you know what? Let's see what he's about. And I, he was just a great person. Like, honestly, I didn't even know about all his work because he's not that known in my area, I guess. Maybe I'm just not up with it. I mean, I can't know about everybody, but I'm happy that I found him and I'm happy that he was such a cool person. And I also find it interesting that he actually has stuff to say. He's like an intelligent person. Yes, he's a comedian, but he actually has stuff to say. Um, and that's, I mean, not to say that most comedians don't, but uh, I mean, he's up there with the Dave Chappelle's. He got compared to Dave Chappelle. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what he does. So I'm definitely interested in finding out more about him, which is why I wanted him as a guest as well. But also I see that he inspires other people. So that is the, the, the basically the basis of this platform. This is not promoting people. This is inspiring people by talking to people that have something to say. Um, you know, everybody has something to say, obviously, but you know, you got to pick and choose. So this, this is my platform. I pick and choose who I want to talk to. Uh, but I also definitely look at what people have to um, uh, have to add to my audience. And my audience does ask me about who I get on and, and what they want. So I do pick and choose my guests based off of the, the, uh, the ask as well. What's up, No? Thank you for tuning in. Um, Nasra, um, were you surprised to learn about his background? No, I wasn't really surprised to learn about his background. I thought it was great. Because, you know, for, for those who don't know me, I'm in Amsterdam. I am not in the States. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I deal with a lot of different people. And actually, one of my good friends is also a comedian in Germany and who's half Iranian, half black. So, and I found out that they know each other also, obviously. So, that's pretty cool. Um, Kenny, what's up? Yep, Motivation Monday with Pay Fresh. You know, again, sending out all good energy to everybody tuning in, whoever needs it. Please have a little bit of mine. Have a lot of mine. I have it today. I don't always have it, but I try to, to, to stick to it. I try to charge my battery. I need the sun because I'm solar charged, but unfortunately the sun is not doing its job out here. It is still cold. We're going into May. I feel like we had 10 months of winter. This is not okay, but you know we have to be okay. So as much as I give everybody energy, you guys tuning in every Monday and every Wednesday, you guys are definitely the ones that give me energy as well. And outside of the talks, um, I love everybody that's um, that's you know tuned in and always supporting me. Uh, I love the questions from from these people that are not familiar with me. What brought you to Amsterdam? Well, I was born and raised here. I I didn't go to Amsterdam. I just popped out over here, and this is where I'm at. I mean, I travel the world, but I am a Dutch native. So uh, if you don't know about me, find out. Go through my page. Go through my Instagram. I have a website, paycolmas.com. 
You can find out everything about me. And again, you can also find all the interviews I've done on there before the pandemic. And then I started doing um, the interviews on here. And you can find all of those on my IGTV. I've been doing this thing for like 20 something years or so. Just, you know, just a little bit. Uh, yeah, Stace. Is the accent? I sound like I'm from New York. That's because I talk to too many people from New York lately. Uh, I do get told that I sound like I have a little Southern accent. Um, who knows? I definitely don't sound Dutch, I guess. But I lost my accent along the way when I'm talking to too many Americans. Uh, this do better hurry up because I'm running out of stuff to say. So I do appreciate the questions. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Nasra Himi. Uh, I do appreciate you tuning in and I love talking to new people and getting to know new people, especially when they're tuned in to, to my stuff. That means you're supporting it and I understand that you're probably a fan of Tehran, but you know what? That doesn't matter. I appreciate you tuning in for this and I'm sending you good energy wherever you are. I hope you're good. Um, oh my gosh, I love her. She's, she's just sending me all these questions. What's your go-to drink at cafes? Well, here's a downer. I don't have a go-to drink. Well, I do. I don't go to cafes, though. But if I had to pick, it's whiskey. For those who know me, they know I'm a whiskey gal. So I guess, yeah. Stace, you better. Sh <laughs> Yo, Stacey and Nob, y'all are my girls, for real. Like, y'all just gonna make me laugh. Um, let's not get into that, though. Uh, and I need to know, did y'all get my text? Just, just so you know. Because uh, I know I've been texting y'all, but... You know, I never have to ask you guys that because you always text me back. Um, what's the one show we should watch that had you hooked? Um, well, recently, definitely Behind Her Eyes. That's definitely a show that got me like, what? Um, after that, there weren't really many new shows that I've been catching up on. So, um, yeah, I love her questions, though. Thank you for keeping me keeping me talking uh i mean everybody in here the rest of you guys you know me but you can ask me questions still oh my sister's in here everybody say hi to our ball in or our bayin because that's my sister in houston i love her to death and i thank her so much for supporting me and she was definitely there for me last week when i had a rough time i miss her i love her uh i have a talk with her as well she's an amazing visual artist i got some art from her here as well and so yeah, check out the talk that I had with her on my IGTV last year. This is my 90, I want to say 95th talk. I lost count. I have to see later on. But um, yeah, go check out uh, Rebea uh, Bayin. That's my big sister. She's in Houston. Um, her artwork is amazing. If you are in Houston, go check out her exhibitions when she has some stuff. She's done some stuff. So definitely um, check that out. If this guy does not come in here... I listen because this hour is um <laughs> I, I'm not good at at freaking monologues wait let me tell him that whoever has questions for me let me know um thank you so much favorite place you've traveled to Ooh, that's a hard one because there's so many places that I love Favorite place I traveled to, definitely somewhere in the Pacific. Like, I've traveled to Hawaii, which is great. I traveled to um, Guam, which is great. Uh, the, oh, pretty much any island where it's warm <laughs> at this point, especially. Uh, Caribbean, great. Um, let me think. Any, any island in Indonesia or the Philippines. Pretty much any island with some sunshine. Um, biggest regret meal, which was way too expensive. Oh, that's so funny. I don't usually regret anything. I just may kick myself in the head and I do it again. But it, recently a memory popped up from when me and my friend Kim were in Rome um, three years ago visiting my cousin who lives there. And we bought some gelato, some ice cream, and it turned out to be 10 bucks. Well, in dollars, probably 12 or $13 per ice cream. So yeah, that was crazy tourist price. But I see he's in here. So let me just get him in here before, you know, before the time goes away from us. And I really do want to have this talk not about me. But so let's get this ball rolling. My guest is here. I did 14 minutes of monologue. I'm proud of myself. Thank you so much, Naz. I appreciate you throwing questions at me. What's up, Teron? So you've been doing monologues the whole time? Yo, I hate these monologues. When guests are late or something happens, I got to 
keep talking and I, I mean I can improvise but it's just not I, I just don't like talking about myself but you have a fan that's tuned in and she was definitely my support today so I gotta I gotta hit her up on the side after this to thank her because I really appreciate that <laughs> how you doing I can't hear you. What's going on? Can you hear me right now? Can you yes, hear me I or no? You, I hear you now. Yes. All right. Perfect. So just uh, just trying to make a living out of life. What's up with you? Man, I am so excited to have you as a guest because first of all, uh, I didn't know about you until I met you. And so I'm just excited to get to know about a new person in a completely different field. And I also found out that you know one of my good friends who's also a comedian who's black and Iranian. So- Who, who? Who's your Norman? good friend? Norman. Norman is the man from yes. Germany. Yeah, 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 yep. of course. Norman and I go years back and uh, I saw that you guys were following each other. So I hit him up to tune in today, but he told me that y'all already had like a live and stuff. I was like, oh, that's so great. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Norman's the man, Norman's, um. Norman's good people. You can't mess around with Norman. Norman's very yep. funny comedian out of Germany on his way up. I think he's going to be, uh, I think he's going to do very well. Oh yeah. I've been training him to get his, his English act together. And Norman will tell you, I'm not bragging about this, but Norman will tell you that I was probably the catalyst for him to really dive into doing what he wants to do and pursuing his passion. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I'm so proud of him because from that point that I had that talk with him to now is he did so great. I'm so proud of what he's doing and pursuing his dream and he's doing good. He's doing good. So yeah. Yeah. He's, he's touring. He's, he's the man. He's definitely yes. good people. So what's so up with you? It's also good to know that good people know each other. That's kind of like a good confirmation. Yeah, Good people. Good people. You all are good people. I don't know if I'm a good person yet. I'm trying to figure it out as we go by. Uh, well, the fact that you're doubting yourself makes you already a better person than most. <laughs> no, that's that's actually a great philosophical way of looking at it. It is, though. You know, when, you, when you're when you aware of, of your flaws, then at least you may be conscious about Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> I don't have any flaws. I just don't know if I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm just saying, I don't know. In your if, eyes, though. You know, yeah. perfect is in the eye of the beholder, too. So, you know. It's like art. <laughs> pretty much um but no thank you for for wanting to be a guest this is this series was started in the beginning of the pandemic a year ago you are my 95th guest um i've done a lot of talks with different people in the creative fields to inspire people during this time hoping hoping that they find a way to navigate through um this world right now because some people take longer to find what they have to do to stay motivated and this might yeah. help a little bit um, so one of the questions that I always ask my guests first is how did the pandemic uh, affect you personally and professionally? Well, the concept of the pandemic, the pandemic is more of a pivot. As so many people thought it was a halt, but it's not. It's just a pivot to yes. whatever's on next. I'm, I'm doing things like being on Instagram Live with you and writing yeah. a lot more and doing Clubhouse. Clubhouse has become a huge part of my pandemic in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. So a lot of transition. Hopefully we all come out of it wiser, a little bit better, mm -hmm. a little more united. That's what I'm hoping comes out of it. But as far as the pandemic itself, it's not really a stop to anything you're doing. It's just a pivot into bigger, better, or the next thing. Right. But that's, but that's something that you know. And this is why I have these conversations, because some people do think it's a stop because they don't have that creative mind that thinks in solutions or in you know, pivots. So you, this is kind of helping people understand that they can do more maybe because of this. So that is- Yeah, it's just a lot of times, it's just a way of thinking. And sometimes we all, at one point or another, we all need help. We all need someone yes. around us to help guide us the way you did with Norman and his comedy. Yeah. A lot of us need people who just are on our side, on our team, look out for us, our best interests. So a lot of times that's how how we inspire, if we can't inspire ourselves, those around us inspire us and become our muses. So yes. that's just how it works. So don't feel down and depressed if you didn't make the most of your pandemic. It is not over. Right. Today, today is the day. Like, don't let your history taint your future. 
Exactly. And then also, not everybody is, is at the same speed. So maybe it takes another person a little longer to get to where they need to be. Uh, not everybody has to just instantly make the most out of the pandemic. Um, and even if the pandemic is over, you may still be processing things, having to deal with your family or people that you may have lost. Everybody goes on their own pace. So timing is, is, is different for everyone. And that's not exactly. a bad thing either. Uh, exactly. And it's just were, everyone's path to success is their own. Right. So what were the biggest, um, I guess, impacts for you as far as this? Like, I know touring is, is kind of gone and, you know, those type of things. What was for you? Uh, what were some of the things that you were like, oh, OK, I got to do this different? Oh, yeah. No, I stopped everything. I'm actually I quit. So I'm actually homeless now. So I wasn't when I was giving that inspiring talk. I didn't mean me. I meant everyone else. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. Like I'm finished. I'm, actually, I'm going to start a GoFundMe. So if you guys can just contribute, if everyone can contribute to that, that'd be really nice. Uh, honestly, with touring being done, a lot of the impact has been on my writing work, writing for different shows and writing mm -hmm. on my own shows. And my partner and I, uh, Menachem and I, we've been doing a lot of that. So hopefully we're looking forward to that next step. But this is the thing about entertainment in Hollywood. It is not a nine to five. There is right. no clocking in, clock out. This is not a job. This is not even a career. It's a destiny. <laughs> it's something you choose for yourself. We don't have to do this. We get to do this. We chose yeah. to do this. And because of that, we have to be more cognitive and aware of the decisions we make and standing by those decisions. So a lot of things have, have changed. A lot of things have changed, some for the better, a lot for the worse, but that better is what keeps you afloat, right? Yes, yes. So talking about this being a destiny, what was for you the defining moment where you were like, okay, I'm choosing to do this because this is my destiny? Mm. Yeah, when I got kicked out of everything else. See, I, I didn't want to do this, right? I'm, I'm just a troublemaker. I'm a troublemaker. So I was trying to do other things, and they just didn't pan out. So now I'm in this. This is my, you know, plan A. This is my plan Z. If this doesn't work out, I have nothing. You're done. So please, everyone support me. Like, help me. This is, this is me saying, you know, just perfect example. Like, you get a job. You have to show up on time. I'm not on time. Uh, there goes that job, right? What What... <laughs> skill sets do I actually have? Is making a smart ass comment <laughs> something you can put on a resume? No, then I guess I have to do comedy. Like that's well, all I have. Here, here, here's maybe a little uh, advice to you uh, from me, a person that just got to know you. Uh, I don't think this is plan Z. I think this is maybe plan F. And the reason I say that because- F for you failure? My dad was right. I should have been a doctor. I should have <laughs> been a doctor. What was the I F thinking? for final plan. And I say oh. that because you have the skills to do this. People get to plan Z not knowing what the fuck they're doing. And you actually know what you're doing. Because you can sit here and be funny about, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. But you do exactly know what you're doing. And so this is why I say this is plan F. Because you will be rock bottom when you get to plan Z where you really don't have the skills to do what you need to do at plan Z. But you kind of have yeah. the skills. So that's I'm just me. <laughs> I, I never know what I'm doing and always know what I'm doing at the exact same time. It's actually, it's also a skill. That's how I work. That's <laughs> how I work. It's the same way that I'm, I'm sarcastic, facetious, and dead ass serious all the time all the at the same time. <laughs> so it, it's just how I, it's just how I operate. But that works for you. So stick to that formula, even if it's not yeah, a formula and it's just you being you. Obviously, that works for you because trust me, there are people that, that think that this is their destiny, but they can't do it. Cause it's just Don't worry. Not what I could never, do. I could never do anything else. The, all, all, the only thing that I could do is be me. That's the only thing that I can do. By the way, I want to say hi to people in the chat. Yes. Mal, Mal TV, Samira Arbabi, Kenny, saying facts. I'm always trying to spit facts. Mehran, I will be in Dallas hopefully very soon. RC Capone, what's up with you? And Saeed, thank you so much. We also have. V2 Carnival, who's given the laugh face. So I'm hoping they're laughing. And Nas Rahimi, more laugh face. Hopefully they're laughing with me and not at me. I would appreciate that. Thank it you so much. It doesn't matter. You make people laugh, regardless if yeah. it's with you or at you. Well, um, actually, that's actually an interesting thing. It does matter, okay? And I'll, and I'll explain to you why. Not, not just to me, just in general, in the interest of, of great comedy. Okay. See, good comedy, good comedy makes you laugh, but great comedy makes you think. And that's what I try to 
approach is great comedy where it makes you think out of the box. It makes you think right. of the absurdities of life. Even my humor in regards to plan Z, most of us don't realize we're all on plan Z. Yeah. We're all doing the thing that we are, we need to do and have to do to get there. And it's great when we see people who feel like they're doing plan A, but the truth is life is plan Z overall. Yeah. Life is you we're here one, one shot. Exactly. Yeah. As far as we know, you only have one. So make the most of it, make the best of it and realize your own potential and at least let others realize your potential for you. But just because they realize that potential doesn't mean they get to guide you to what you do. Yeah. They get to assist you in what you're doing. And there's a huge difference. If at all, if at all. And, and I'll tell you, thank you for saying that as a comedian. And I, I'm not going to tell you why it doesn't matter for me because I'm not a comedian. So if I make people laugh, whether they're, they're laughing at me or, or with me, it's all good to me because I just want to spread positivity and make people laugh in, in, in whatever world they're going through. But I'm not a comedian. So I can say it doesn't matter to me. But I can see your point of view, especially when you want to make people think, when your aim is to make people think outside the box, then yes. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's your profession. So I, I don't care. Nobody has to pay me to make, you know, to, to laugh at me or laugh with me. So, <laughs> but that's. But difference. anyone gets to interpret it for themselves. So whatever yeah. makes it good for you, whatever, just like you said, perfection is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. So, yeah. Behold perfection. That's what all. What was. Uh, what was for you the first um, moment of actual success in your eyes? Like the success for you. Success is different for everybody. People want to make millions. Other people want to be married. And so success is a, is, a, is a very broad concept to everyone. So what was for you your first moment of success? It's interesting. I don't know if I've had my first moment of success yet because to me, everything is tomorrow. Tomorrow is my most successful day. So I'm always looking for the more. I'm cursed with that. But in, not in the, the greedy way, not in the selfish way, the but in a, in a good way. Yeah. Exactly where it inspires me to want more, to do more, to excel, to reach heights. And, and when I say that, I don't know if I'll ever specifically be content, even though I'm usually very happy. And, right. and I'm a content person with the way things are going, the trajectory. I'm a happy person. I enjoy I enjoy the most out of life and especially my life. I really like being me, by the way. I really like it. That's amazing. Uh, not a lot of people the say that. I know. I like being me. Like, that's why people, sometimes they'll think I'm a loner. They think that I'm, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, and I am an introvert. But the truth is, I just like me. Like, I like being me. I like being around me. I like doing the things that I do and the way that I think. And I love learning from other people all the time. So, when you add those up, my success is tomorrow yeah. and that tomorrow. And I'm just happy that I get a tomorrow to look forward to. That's amazing. I, I, I kind of understand that because if somebody would ask me when my success moment was, I don't have one defining moment either. Uh, but talking about you being happy with you, I know for me personally, my journey, it took me a while to get to that point. I'm very happy with who I am and I'm proud of the things that I've overcome. Was it for you a journey to be happy with who you are and are you still working on staying that way or progressing as a person? You know what? To be very, to be very open and transparent and honest in this Please. regard, Yeah. while I know that for many people, it's a search. It's a journey for that. Yeah. For me, it wasn't. It was just maybe it was by design, maybe by being half black, half Persian and growing up at a time that I did with the people that I did. I was very fortunate to become comfortable with who I am and how I am very early in life. Yeah. Very early in life, I found that rhythm where I was just comfortable being me and I beat and I danced to the beat of my own drum. Right. right. So I've always just been that way. I've always just. I'll do what I want to do regardless. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. But at least, if nothing else, it's my thing. Right. So regardless of how something turns out, I know that it was my, my decision, decision yeah. my way yeah. of doing it yeah. for the most part. And that's what I enjoy the most. I really respect that. And I had a conversation this weekend with one of my friends who's also a comedian who also knew from jump that who he was and what he was going to do and making those conscious decisions. And I told him, yo, I'm, I really respect that because 
that's not something that a lot of people have. Like you said, it's a search, it's a journey. For me, I always knew what I wanted to be and how I wanted to be. I just didn't know who I was. That's also a difference, you know? And so I had to really find myself first before I could actually implement the things that I wanted to do for myself and, and, and be happy. It's a conscious decision that I had to make. And that's what I mean with working on, on myself. And constantly, I, I try to be a better person tomorrow than I was today. Um, Good for you. And, and as you should, as you should, a lot of a lot of things that I do is I don't want anyone to change me. I don't want to change. I want to grow, but I never right. want to change. Right. Right. I love growing, yes. but I hate changing. Yes. You know? and that's you know what? You said that perfectly because change can be good. But if you're if you're good already, then it's growth, growth. And um, exactly. How, what do you do for yourself to to stay that way or to. <laughs> Just, are you just you and you just don't give a shit about whatever people's advice? You know what about? it is? It's not that I don't care what other people think. A lot of people always take it that way. And there's a lot of times that I'll even use the phrase, I don't care. But it's not that I don't care. That's not exactly what it is. I know what you mean. I, it's, it's, it's that I do care about me. Like, I do care about... You take it about, into consideration and that's it. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, I care. Like, I care but I, I care about things that are actually important, right? right? So I'm the friend you call when something's real. Don't call me with the hi, how are you, how have you been? Like, I don't need small talk. To... Wait, hold on, come back. You're, I'm losing you. No, we're having such a great conversation. Is this me? Is this him? Is this, what is this? Instagram, his connection? Let me know, people. Is it me? Can you still see me? Am I frozen? Um, I see the comments going, so it must be him. And he needs to stop moving around. That's why. Um, let me know, please, people. I don't, man, I love being in the middle of a good conversation. And Instagram always does that. Every time I have like a death smack, serious, great conversation, um, you know, this Instagram just like, oh, let's just keep it light. You know, ugh, I hate when that happens. If y'all go back to all of my, my um, talks, then you'll see that that happens a lot. Okay, he's back here. Okay, thank you guys for letting me know. He's back here, though. So let's see if he can jump back in. Um, yes. You're right, I need to stop moving around. <laughs> I'm moving around too much. I'm maybe going outside of my, uh, my internet zone. Yeah, please stay there. Because every time that happens, when I have a really good conversation and people are really tuned in, listening to what you're saying, this shit happens. Instagram does that. But okay, this was you, super you know, it's, it's, it's because I don't know how cameramen do it. My arm is getting tired just holding my little phone. Like my arm is getting you tired. You need a I tripod or something. Um, I, I have all this stuff, but I'm, I'm, I just didn't bring it. Like I'm just. Because you were late. Right <laughs> yeah, of course. I was like, I'm black and Iranian. You yeah. thought I was going to be what on time? Like, yeah. I like should, honestly, I should have told you eight uh, or what is it? Uh, Eleven thirty. Yeah. <laughs> my, I have a whole, I have a whole theory that that time being on time is actually racist. Hear me out. Hear me out. Right. All right. No other culture, no other culture was on time. Okay. Then, then Western white culture use time, use time to control as a, exactly as right. Oh, you're late. You're late to court. You're guilty. But wait, I'm here now. Nope, guilty. You're late. Oh, you're late in paying a fine? You're suspended. Go to jail. You're oh, late you're to late work, to the you're fired. <laughs> exactly. Even though it doesn't technically matter as long as you get the work done. We're done, yeah. I do. Why does it matter? But they're like, yo, be be on time. Oh, you're not on time? Tim is on time. Tim gets a promotion. But Tim's not as good a worker. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it's a time is something we've created. You think the tree knows what time it is? No. <laughs> The, t the well, tree just knows that there's sunlight or not. We've created right. it. We've created it. For this, just for to hurt the, each other. For the people that are tuned in that, that don't know my heritage, I'm I'm partly Indonesian. Both my parents were born there, and we have a saying called "jump cut it," which means literally uh, elastic time because they're never on time either. Like, exactly. They just stretch the time to whatever. Nobody, they feel like. <laughs> listen. In the history of man, nobody was on time. <laughs> nobody even think about why why time oh let's sell them watches but when you look at like rich rich people they don't even wear watches they don't even have watches right yeah, for sure so make all of us 
They just make us have watches. No one even uses their watch to tell time. We have phones. I do. You know what I'm saying? He's mine for you know? time. <laughs> well, then you're the outlier, okay? <laughs> Most people, you look at your phone and you see what time it is. Right. And then you kind of know. So I'm just letting you know, being on time is racist. And you that's my final I word. I can't disagree with you there because I come from a culture that doesn't really care about time. Uh, but uh, I do have to say that time to me, I'm always very picky when I when I meet up with people or when I have like meetings because time is money at this point. Time is the only thing you can't get back in life. So for me, time But is here's precious. the thing. That's a perfect example. So time, you can't get it back, so you should use it. The fact that we equate time to money and not money to time is also part of the problem. Money is man-made completely. Yes. That's the perfect argument. That's the logic. Yes. It's like we're saying time is money. Money is man-made. We created money in order definitely to control Very one another. Very true. So when you're saying time is money and we're worried about the money aspect instead of the time aspect, maybe we should all just reevaluate life. I agree. When I say time, my time is valuable, it doesn't necessarily mean money. Um, it's an expression. So I should say time is valuable instead of time is money. Because I do appreciate my time. And if people don't consciously respect my time, then I automatically don't do the same for them anymore either. Because it is something that you can't get back. So if you have me waiting on you, not necessarily you for your five minutes, but if somebody- Oh, I, I make everyone wait on me. I have a problem. I have a problem. You know, have and a you problem. know what? All the friends that I know are late. I do tell them a different time and I'm just showing up later because I just, I, you know, I- And I they're also creatives. In. All your creatives <laughs> are always the ones who are late. All your creatives. But because you know what? time just escapes us really quick. Like we're in the thought, we're in this moment where we're just like thinking. Sometimes and a friend of mine brings this up. If I'm driving by myself or if I forget, I won't even turn on music. Like I listen to my own thoughts. Yeah. I, I drive like long distance just thinking. Yeah, same. I don't need music to entertain me because I'm I'm finding myself very entertaining. <laughs> just the way I'm I'm viewing things and re and uh, revisiting my experiences in the world that I see. So a lot of times for me, that time construct, and I'm not, and it's unfortunate, I'm not a timely person. I wish I, I, wish I had the aptitude to be more so, but even when I face the consequences, to me, it's worth it. It's worth it. Right. That way I, I'm doing things on my time. Like, and, my, and, th and this was a conversation we were going to before we got off about in regards to that content, happiness, finding it, everyone's path being different. And if I care what others think, what other people, for example, what other people say about me, and if they told somebody and that person comes tell me, they told you, not me. Right. So it's none of my business. Right. What other people think is none of my business. And so if they to me, want to talk my, to you, they will let you know. <laughs> exactly. My peace of mind means more to me than everyone else's comfort. Yes. My Agreed. peace of mind means more to me than everyone else's comfort. Going back to the concept of time being valuable, my time. I don't have time to be negated, to feel defeated, to have that negative energy around mm -hmm. me. I don't have time to be stressed. I don't have time. That's the stuff I don't have time for. Right. But that's, I don't have that's time exactly for that what stuff. I mean. Because everybody uh, uses their time however they see fit for them. Um, it's, it's something that pertains to yourself and not anybody else. You should always look at your own values and your own worth and what you want for yourself that's what's making you happy happiness to me and we can debate this too but i don't want to but i'm just gonna say it happiness to me is a choice and it's not it, it's you choose your happiness you choose how you deal with things and people are like well you can't choose the, the stuff that's happening no but you can choose how to deal with that and that to me keeps my mind overall positive because i choose not to dwell on the negative even if bad things happen my time is too valuable to hang around in that. Just like you said, you don't have time to stress. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So the concept to me, a lot of times has to do with the ideas of who you are as a person and being yeah. comfortable with that. Yes. And being, and being, and being comfortable with the benefits and the consequences. See, that's the problem. A lot of people love the benefits of something, they but hate to. the consequences yeah. and they can't just face it. At yeah. some point, it's not everybody else. At some point, it's you, right? Yeah. And if you're okay with the consequences, then you will be happy. If you right. understand why something's happening. But that's that conscious decision you make for yourself. Just like you said earlier, if for the most it doesn't part. work out, 
I know I made this decision knowing whatever the consequences could be. It could turn out right. It could turn out bad. If it turns out exactly. bad, we'll keep it moving. That's living consciously because even though you came with it when you were born, I didn't. And I had to always make these, these assessments about myself in order to get to the point where I'm comfortable with making conscious decisions, no matter what the consequences are, because I know I, I make a battle. It's like, okay, if I do this, this can happen. I'm still doing it. That's my choice. Exactly. Um, and not dismissing people with mental afflictions or depression. Those are chemical imbalances. We're talking within the realms of the generalization of the average person. So well, just not even so. I deal that. with depression. Full transparency. I deal with depression. So I had to really navigate through my depression to try and keep that mind state positive. This is a fight for me every day. And but I, I again, I choose not to give in to that. And it's not easy. I'm sitting here, maybe it looks like it's easy, but people trust me. I am almost 43 years old. This is still a battle. Like this is not something that's gonna change overnight, but it is something that I choose to battle because I don't wanna be in that negative space. So. To give shout outs to comedians in the chat. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, Pay for being so transparent, putting her wall down, being so vulnerable. That's That's a part of, you know, the journey, but shout yeah. out to the comedians in the chat, the chat, pork chops, Zarna Garg in the chat. And of course people, uh, Jim Vieff in the chat, Rasul K, I mean, Vali Zadeh, Amir Ghulami, who's saying, Tehran, tell us a joke. You know, Amir, I don't know what you do for a living, but I would never go to someone and be like, what did Menachem say? Make a bread for me. <laughs> do some accounting. Yeah. Do some accounting right now. <laughs> yeah, do some accounting right now. And that's not, exactly. what this, that's not what this talk is about. We're not, we're not talking about him being funny. We're talking about his journey and, and your perspective on things and your inspirations, and which leads me into the next thing because you, I, I find it very interesting that you say, you know, I am this person and uh, maybe I'm lucky that I, I was just made like this. But who are your inspirations and where do you get your inspiration and motivation from? Yeah, so... Uh... Matthew McConaughey is my inspiration. Matthew McConaughey. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to see how awkward that could be. <laughs> Why okay. like, use Matthew I... McConaughey? Someone random, and then be like, "That's my. That's all. That's everyone should know that." Matthew McConaughey, by the way, is amazing. But I really like this speech about my insp his inspiration being him five years from now. That's how I feel often. So. <laughs> But my inspiration is oftentimes the people around me. I try to steal sharp and steals. Actually, Zarna Garg is in the chat, and I, she's an inspiration to me. Mm. My friends, Chris Red or Tiffany Haddish, or just watching people grow, because, or Rami Youssef, Mo Amr, watching people who are my friends grow. Because yeah. to me, when I see Aaliyah Lamar, for example, do amazing on Clubhouse, mm -hmm. And I'm, I watch the journey happen. I realize I can do that as well. Right. That's what I like. And, and especially when I see people who, who can, who just do things. And I right. love that. I love when people do things for themselves with their own inspiration. Yeah. And I watch how it happens. I'm watching people grow. And I, I like that personally. A lot of people yeah. feel like life is a zero sum game as if, the only way they win is if someone else loses. I like the idea oh. that everyone everybody can wins. Win. Yeah. Everybody can win. Everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. Well, you should like me then because I just started this and it took its own life. You know, I do things when I f feel like doing it. I don't care. You know, it works or it doesn't work, but I'm going to do it regardless if I want to. I'll add you. I'll add you to that list. I'll add <laughs> no, you to the okay. list. No, but definitely you, I mean, I met you for five seconds and um, I already felt the energy you had and, and we weren't even directly talking to each other at the time. Um, so for you to come on here and I'm completely blown away by this conversation myself. This is also why I do these talks, not just for everybody watching, but also for me. I get inspiration and motivation from my guests. I, I'm just so like, I had energy already when I started this and I feel like a thousand times more energized because of this conversation. Thank you so much. I'm not done yet. That was just me saying thank you. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't go. Yo, uh, it was nice talking to you. <laughs> I'll see you around. You know, it's no! great. <laughs> I'm not done what, yet. what is this painting? What is this painting behind you? De La Soul? Yeah. 
So this is made by one of my good friends, uh, Mike Thompson. He's done stuff for Def Jam. He's done stuff for Marvel. He's uh, worked with Hasbro. And so he made this and he actually uh, made it from, he also designed my logo, you know, side note. So a lot of people asked me about the painting. So I did an, an actual talk with him as well because he's he's had a great- Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, because it's great art, obviously. De La Soul, one of the classic rap bands yeah. uh, in the 90s leading up to a tribe called Quest, that yes. whole backpack rap. So whenever you like a Kanye or a Kid Cudi, just like it's because you they like De La Soul. Right. And so for those, just to, to say a little bit more about me, I'm a hip hop uh, nerd, so to speak. So I have a lot of guests. Like I had Eric Sermon throwing out gems. I had the Chip Foos. I had the um, I had Keith Shockley the other day. I had Nature. I had Mike Geronimo. So all these cats from back in the day, I've had talks with them. So feel free to scroll through my IGTV and find your your inspiration. Uh <laughs> and I see I see that I love inspirations. Glue Delicious Ma, who is a wonderful trainer in Canada. If you all are familiar, please check out her 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 page. She's in there and Leela Talk Lifestyle is in the yeah. chat as well. So Leela also is a leader in a lot of movements, especially progressive feminism and anti-racism movements. So it's amazing to awesome. have all these people. But when it comes to yourself, you're not in the States. Why do you have such a closeness to the American culture, American music, American movies? Because of hip hop. Um, and you know, over here being in Amsterdam, American culture is pretty much what I grew up with on TV and radio. And so we don't uh, sync everything. We don't dub everything. It's just originals. So you hear everything and you read the subtitles and the shows or whatever you see on TV. I just love the music and I love hip hop culture for the fact that it pretty much uh, stimulates people to get out their slump or whatever situation they're in and go get what they need to get to be in life where they want to be. And that's pretty much what I resonate with because of the hardships that I've been through. No, I'm not from the streets or whatever, but still everybody goes through their own hardships and that motivated me to be part of something bigger and i wanted to pay my respects to the culture by you know introducing the culture over here as far as my interviews and stuff so i could interview dutch artists and all but i was more so focused on bringing hip-hop the actual hip-hop culture to the netherlands and that's what i did with you know being a journalist having my had my own radio show i pay tribute and just because hip hop kind of saved me, you know, in my life. And uh, I make a lot of trips to the States. I have friends and family out there. I have clients out there. So the Netherlands is a small country. There's really no room for someone like me. I'm, I think global, so I don't have to stay here. <laughs> why, why hip hop? Why does hip hop speak to you so, so much? Well, my dad was a musician. So, you know, he played everything when I grew up. Um, soul, blues, country, pop, uh, rock. He played everything. He was a guitarist. He was a producer, uh, a songwriter. And so everything came down to growing up with music that pretty much laid the foundation for hip hop music. Uh, but I also dabbled in uh, graffiti. I dabbled in dance. I was an MC at one point. I was rapping. I DJed, I did mixtapes for some people. So it was just all the, the, the knowledge part definitely is something that I've been doing, giving out through my guests or myself. So all of those elements from hip hop really spoke to me, all aspects, not just music. You know, when people see my tattoo saying hip hop, they think it's rap music. No, it's the actual culture and everything in it. So yeah, but I like more things. I mean, you know, like I said, my dad, played all kinds of music. I played the piano and the bass guitar when I was little. I play all kinds of music. I love 80s music, you know. I'm a 70s child, so. That's what's up, good for you. Yeah, a lot of people need to understand that hip hop culture and black culture has paved the way for international yes. unity and community yeah. because hip hop and black culture tends to be the popular, when I say popular, I mean as in popular in the terms of the masses, form of communication. It's yes. the music of the streets. It's the music of the people. Yes. And so it's just interesting watching how that plays out. Well, also just to, to give you a little bit more background, I mean, hip hop came, black culture and hip hop culture uh, uh, came, it, it rose up because of oppression. And so me being here in the Netherlands, for those who don't know my history, 
um, Indonesia didn't become independent until 1947. We were enslaved and, and colonized by the Dutch. So that has a whole other kind of, uh, you know, relating aspect to black culture and hip hop culture. So that also ties in with how I was raised and where I am at um, dealing with, you know, white Netherlands. So that's definitely a part of it too. And that's interesting. I mean, it's interesting. A lot of people don't know that history. No, they don't understand. They don't. And, and it's interesting to understand that the reason why so many people relate to hip hop and relate to black culture isn't necessarily just the the words that are being used, but the feelings of being yes, oppressed or exactly. feelings of being of of being disenfranchised. Yes. And the fact that so many people in the world can relate to that feeling makes us think that we need to reevaluate how the world is being held. It yeah. shouldn't be that way. In yeah. fact, it should be a world where no one listens to hip hop because they don't feel oppressed, right? right. Like it should be a world where everyone wants to listen to uh pop music right. or whatever. Happy stuff fun. Or whatever. Yeah. Exactly, whatever it is. But the reason why we understand and relate and feel hip hop first and foremost is because of that feeling it gives of yes. empowerment in the face of oppression. It yeah. makes the average person feel strength. And yes. we don't in our natural lives. So, so here's the day. Like, I, I mean, I love hip hop. I love hip hop. But that concept of why yeah. makes has to make you think. Yes, and that's why I talk about the culture and not the music because so many people are are just misinformed thinking that it's music. Even shows like Love and Hip Hop completely have nothing to do with the culture. It, but it gives people a very wrong message about what hip hop really is, where it came I mean, from. I have to argue with you on that. Love and hip hop is part of the culture. Like, we can't always just look at the good part and dismiss no, no, the bad I parts. Say, I didn't say it wasn't necessarily part of a culture, but for people that don't know hip hop or its origins, the regular person, the consumer that sits in front of their TV, you know, going through the channels, they think that is the definition of hip hop. That's not what it is. Hip hop evolved. So I understand the yeah, it's a part of it. It's yeah. a part of it. It's well, all part. It's all yeah, part. It's all part of the bigger the bigger feast that is hip hop. So it is. I know a lot of people don't like it the same way I know like Persian people that hate Shaws of Sunset, right? Yeah. Because they hate looking at this. They hate and they go, Oh, well, that's not how we are. And it's like that's not what they're saying. They're saying right. this is how they are. And second of all, no one had a problem with Jersey Shore. No one had a problem with real world. But now when it's your turn. <laughs> people have a problem with it. I know, like, I've always had a problem with reality TV. It came from over here. You know that it started with Big Brother and that was made out of a, a company over here and they just sold all the reality shows to the rest <laughs> of the world. Trust Actually, me. the reason we have reality TV is because of a writer's strike in 2008. And that's why we have reality TV. There was a writer's strike. <laughs> and so reality TV got bought up. But you know what? The reality TV is still part of TV. It's still part of when it's culture not and to me it's important no, yeah no I it's important like yeah it's important if and that's what i always tell people if you don't like something change the channel you know and but i don't to, have tv let's just say that i don't have a tv i watch everything online but i don't have cable subscription anymore i've canceled my tv like five or six years ago i just don't have tv especially not over here because i know in the states it's even worse when i when i see the tv over there i'm like that's too much ah, just turn it off but over yeah. here it's just nothing really it's i don't really i know. i understand that like i don't have a tv in my bathroom every other room has a tv <laughs> though like i i'm wait, in tv wait, like i love homeless. tv you said you gave up everything you're homeless Where, what is yeah, that? yeah. but but when you're look, listen when you're half persian homeless is different you know what i'm saying homeless, i didn't know that you're gonna have to explain that to me yeah it's like a whole different it's <laughs> like different yeah, i'm definition. homeless but have a home you know it's a different <laughs> It's different. So no, I really appreciate the the, the mind stimulating conversation. Uh, I do want to ask you, you know, as much as you say you give up, what are you doing right now? You said you're writing for other shows, but what, are there any? I'm writing. You still have. I'm writing on my own shows. I'm writing on shows that I'm hoping uh, we've been taking meetings. Hopefully they sell. We've been writing scripts. I've been doing comedy, a lot of comedy online. I do actually have shows. I have a show this week. At Irvine Improv with Maz Jabrani, but on Wednesday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, I, I have my own show at the Improv where I'm headlining. So if anyone wants more Tehran, come to that show where I'm going to be headlining. And 
looking for everybody to help out with that and spread the word and spread the love. Can we can we expect you when the world opens up? Can we expect you over here? You know what? Here's the thing about me. You can never expect me to do anything. But yes, hopefully I'll be there soon. Maybe <laughs> like, if you feel like you can it, never expect arises. the unexpected. Expect right. the unexpected and yes, like I'll be everywhere. Like well, that's the whole goal is to be everywhere. Right. So, well, I, all I ask is it just let me know so I can just, you know, make sure that I'm around because I would love to see you do something here in person. And obviously, I would just want to say hi to you in person uh, when the world allows us to. And we could just take a trip to Germany and, you know, scoop up Norman or whatever. <laughs> yeah, go, we'll, we'll do a tour. Maybe we'll right. do a mini tour. Yo, if I go awesome. to Germany, I'll definitely have Norman open. So, right. Norman's that'd be there. awesome. No, um, that I want to ask that. And then uh, before we go. Um, I wanted to ask you, well, you've just, you gave so much advice, so much insight, so much knowledge. Like, I don't even want to ask this question, but what is one of your life mottos or advices that you live by that you want to give out to the people? One of my life mottos is, is always, is always going to be do what makes you happy. And when I say that, I don't mean, and don't disregard what other people's happiness if you're truly happy, that means because everyone around you is also happy. That's a part of your happiness. So do what makes you happy. Do what's best for you. See, here's the thing. On the day of your funeral, all these friends and all the family and all the people in the world that you tend to follow and listen to, on the day of your funeral, you know who's definitely going to be there? Out of all those people, the only person for sure that's going to be there on your day of your funeral is you. Yeah. So you should live your life with a lot of that mentality. Like, Live your life for yourself the same way you you know you're gonna die for yourself. Right. That's that's the way. That's the way you make sure that you live a full, full, happy a life. life. Yeah. And, exactly. But it doesn't mean disregard the people around you. It just means make sure that you're doing things on the terms that you want to that are fulfilling yourself as yes. well. Yes. And you know what? That that is advice that I, or a motto that I live by. And I started doing that in my thirties somewhere. That's when I made that conscious decision to be happy and do only things that make me happy. And people are looking at me like, but you can't only do things that make you happy. Yes, I actually can. If I don't want to do something, I'm just not going to do it. I mean, not to talk about paying bills and stuff like that, but literally the decisions in my life that I make, I do to make, because they make me happy. I make decisions and you based stand on by what them. I want. Yeah. Exactly. So and, with a bill, it's like if you buy something, you stand by it and you pay for it. Yeah, that's the thing. So it yeah. is still making you happy. Even yeah, though it's not always good to pay a bill. It's the decision that you made to begin with. So that's right. Now, thank you for explaining that. I can use that one for the next person that asked. I got me that. you. Uh, remember, remember, if you're ever late, time is racist. And then if you <laughs> why do you pay bills? Because what you got initially is just standing by a decision that made you. Happy. Yes. That's all. You know what? You're absolutely right. I'm going to use that. Um, now, I was going to close off, but I completely forgot to ask you this question that, that I asked people, and I am very curious on, on what your answer would be because of who you are and what you've explained about yourself to me. But I always ask, what is people's biggest mistake, quote unquote mistake, that turned out to be a great lesson? Have you made any mistakes in this industry that turned out to be lessons? I know you're probably going to say, I don't make mistakes because I just, you know, whatever, but... Oh, no. All I make is mistakes, actually. All oh. I make is mistakes. What's the and some one? turn to work out. So my the idea that I think of is that in life, either something's a lesson or a blessing. Yes. Yes. And that's the way you should look. It's like yes. either I'm getting a lesson out of this or I'm getting a blessing right. out of this. So that's what I mean. My, it turned out to be a lesson. Yes. But honestly, the whole thing is a mistake. There is no right way to live life. So it's all a series of mistakes that culminate into either success or what you deem as success or failure, but better yet, what you deem as failure. Right. So everything, if I could go back, you know, I would do it all different, right? Because hindsight is twenty twenty. Would you? It, that works for everyone. Would you? I would do everything different. I really? would have bought Amazon and Google stock. I would have been Jeff Bezos. I would have been, I would have. I but you wouldn't, been. because if you could go back and do that, life might have not been Amazon successful or 
you know, something else might have happened. The timeline. Oh, I, I already thought about this. So I would just do enough where it doesn't make waves, right? So I'm already, <laughs> I have this down to a science, okay? Uh -huh. I sit there and think of crazy things all the time. So I would never tip the boat. I would never rock the boat, right? I would just do just enough where it's like I'm riding these waves. But you no, still don't know. Back, because if you go back, life may not have turned. Everything still changes because it's not just depending on you. Life is life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to roll that dice. I'm willing to roll that dice. Well, I I'm willing to take that chance. I wouldn't change the Good. thing, but that's because I had to make this journey to be where I'm at, and I'm happy. I'm not. I get it. Anything. I would have won the lottery when I was. Listen, I would have <laughs> went through. I don't. Every every three years, I would just win the big lottery, right. you know, and just re up. Like I would just live like that's the thing. But the one thing I do wish would happen is like these are lessons you need to learn, but. This is why I always have these conversations with young comedians or young people in this. Like, I tell them the truth. I wish someone told me the truth early right. instead of just saying things. Oh, you're great. There are ways to get better. Yeah. And I would have gotten better even if it wasn't sooner or quicker, but it would have been faster. And that's, right. that's a thing. But other than that, I really like how everything's been turning out so far. Do you have a team of people or maybe one or two friends around you that keep you grounded, that tell you the truth? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a team. You're looking at them right now. I, <laughs> me, myself, and I. No, but I do have really good friends, like my buddy George Corey, and of course, Menachem Silverstein. And I have like really great friends that I rely on and I right. trust. And I have, uh, outside of that, I have like my friend Tabby. I just have a group of people right. who are like my close. Well, I don't use it's terms circle. like best friend. Yes, I don't like terms like best friend. But this is my this is my crew. This is right. my crew. So. Right. That's who I utilize. Yeah. I was wondering about that. I have because, cousins. Because <laughs> yeah. as great as you are, I was wondering if you have people that, that really tell you the truth. Because I think that people often have ass kissers or yay sayers around them when you really need those people, whether they're friends or just people you know, you need people that tell you the truth about you in order to improve yourself or to progress as a person. Exactly. Or in your career or personally, yeah. Exactly. We all, we all do. We all should. Yeah. Having yes people around you is cause what's going to make your life turn out to be a no. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for this great talk. I'm very inspired. I, I love having met you on Clubhouse. Uh, thank you so much for wanting to spend your precious time with me for an hour. Uh, I, I appreciate you and I really look forward to seeing more of you and seeing you win even, even more than you already are, even though you don't think you're successful. I think you're a success in my eyes because of the person that you are and the things that you teach and give out, the information you give out to the world. Because you don't have to do it, but you do and you choose to do that consciously. Thank you I appreciate so much. you very much. Shout out to Anthony M. Bertram in the building. Um, feeling inspired. I, I appreciate you. You're inspiring me with your words right now. Greg Fleischman. Greg Fleischman's <laughs> in the building. Arash Ma, Arya Farhande, uh, and all the people, <laughs> Thingster, <laughs> Tattoo Chavez, Afsanet. Thank you yeah, all for being in the chat, keeping it live. <laughs> I should go through it. I'm I, every one of them counts. I, I take I every. A lot of people are always like, "Oh, but I only have a hundred followers on YouTube." I'm like, a hundred is that's a hundred people that support you. A, exactly, that's a hundred more than zero. If yeah. I multiply a hundred by a million, that's a hundred million. If right. I multiply zero by a million, that's still zero. zero. Yeah. So always wow. take those steps in that direction. Just make that happen. Anyway, I appreciate you for having me. And You're welcome. Thank you. Thank oh, you it's so Maha. Much. What's up, Maha? Maha is in the building. That's what's up. She's very, I've known her for a very long time. Well, um, I thank all your fans to tune in for me. Get familiar with me. Find your inspiration on my IGTV. Uh, Tehran, thank you so much again. Uh, I will be in touch with you. I will hit you up. If you need me for anything, reach out, please. Um, and we'll do a little celebration when you come over here and we go get Norman and, and, and make some jokes together. <laughs> For sure. This is Tehran and I'm done speaking. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, then. So that was a great talk. Oh, my God. If, if you're not motivated by this conversation, then something was wrong with you. Uh, but seriously, this was amazing. And this is why I like to switch up my, my guests as well. Because, you know, if you have too many of the same creatives, you're going to have the same conversations which is fine because it's different perspectives 
But I like to switch it up. And this was a person that I didn't necessarily have in my friends group because I do know a lot of people. But I just appreciate the fact that he was willing to share his honesty and his knowledge and feedback. And, you know, we got to learn so much about him. And for those who asked if I'm going to save this live, if Instagram is going to let me shine, yes. So you should be able to share this one and, and or look back if you missed something. Go back and listen to the gems that he was dropping uh, such a great, intelligent, knowledgeable guy. And I want to see him win just like everybody else. Thank you so much for tuning in. There's so many people in here that I don't know and that probably didn't know me, but I appreciate you tuning in, even if it wasn't for me. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I'll be back on Wednesday with another um, amazing, motivating person. And that one is going to be interesting because this is a person that's going to share a lot of um, uh, knowledge about um, being prepared uh, in your career. That's all I'm going to say for now. But uh, see you guys uh, on Wednesday. I wish everybody great positive energy. I hope you guys are just as boosted with your energy as I am. Everybody who needs an extra dose of positivity and love, here you go. It's for me. Free on the house. And uh, I'll probably have some more on Wednesday. This is a great start of your week. This sets the tone for you. So stay up, stay happy, stay positive. And if you're not, Find the people around you that are so you can get a little bit of that positive energy. Um, I encourage everybody to uh, pay it forward. So thanks again for uh, tuning in. See you guys later. Peace.